Hello, class 9 students. Welcome to English class. Today we will learn a very famous poem, The Lake Isle of Innisfree, written by William Butler Yeats in the year 1888. This poem is a 12 lines poem comprising three quatrains. This poem is a lyric, a song format. It explores the poet's longing for the peace and tranquility of NS3, a place where he spent a lot of time as a boy. NS3 is the name of a place. It is a very quiet place, and that is the reason the poet wants to go there. He had spent his childhood in this place. He has very sweet memories of that place. That is why he wanted to go back to the lake island of NS3. So first of all, I will be reading the stanza one two three then i will do the explanation then we will have the word meanings and literary devices used in the poem summarization of the poem and then in the end home assignment the lake isle of ennis free i will arise and go now and go to ennis free and a small cabin built there of clay and wattles made Nine bin rows will I have there, a hive for the honey bee, and live alone in a bee loud glade. And I shall have some peace there, for peace comes dropping slow, dropping from the veils of the morning to where the cricket sings. There midnight's all a glimmer and noon a purple glow, and evening's full of the linnet's wings. I will arise and go now, for always night and day. I hear the lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore. While I stand on the roadway or on the pavement's grey, I hear it in the deep heart's core. So in the first stanza, arise means stand up. Cabin means room. Wattles means twisted sticks for making fences or walls. Glade, clearing or open space. Be loud refers to the sound made by the buzzing of the bees. I here refer to the poet William Yeats. He says that he wants to go to Ennis Free. Over there, he will build a small room for himself with clay and small sticks, which are used to make the walls or the fences of the cabin, as he will need some food to eat also. So he will grow nine rows of bins near his room. Also he will get a honey from the honey bee hive. He says that the open space where he will build his room will be full of the buzzing sound of the bees and over there he will live all alone in peace and tranquility. In the second stanza, veils means a piece of fine material worn by women to protect or hide the face. Locally, it is called as dupatta, purda, or burka. Cricket, an insect related to the grasshoppers but with shorter legs. The male cricket produces a characteristic musical chirping sound. And a linnet, a small brown and gray bird with a short beak. And glimmer means something which is shining. So in this stanza, the poet says that when in NS3, he will feel peaceful and he says that the feeling of peace is felt slowly and gradually. He describes how he would feel peaceful in the morning time when it is cloudy and the view is not very clear. Then it will appear as if the morning has worn a veil and has hidden itself. Looking at this scene will make him feel peaceful. Further, he says that when the male cricket's insect will sing a song, that sound will bring him at peace. Also at midnight, when he will see the twinkling stars in the, in the open sky, their shine will give him peace. In the morning, uh, in the afternoon, when the sunlight will give a purplish glow, it will also give him peace. During the evening, when he will see the linnet bird flying in the sky, <coughs> in the sky he will also feel peaceful. In the third stanza, I will 
Night and day means all the time. Lapping means striking. Heart score means the innermost part of the heart. So in this stanza, the poet says that he will now stand up and go to Enesbury because all the time the sound of the lake waters striking the shore repeats in his mind. This sound attracts him towards the lake. Wherever he is, either standing on the roadway or on the grey colored pavements, he hears the sound deep in the innermost part of his heart. Now we have the literary devices in the poem. The first one is rhyme scheme. Rhyme scheme means the ordered pattern of rhymes at the ends of the lines of a poem or verse. So this rhyme scheme we have discussed in the previous poem, the root not taken. I'm sure you, you still remember that. And this, to find out the rhyme scheme, I'm going to give you as an assignment to find out. Then the second one is alliteration. The repetition of a consonant sound in two or more closely placed words is called alliteration. So the instances of alliteration in a poem are hype, honeybee, each sound is repeated. So another instances of uh, alliteration device used in the poem, again you'll have to find out. Then the third one is repetition. I will arise and go now. This is repeated in stanza 1 and 3. So that is repetition, one device. Another one is, fourth one is personification. Characteristics of non-living things attributed to living things. Example, morning is personified as woman. Then metaphor. Metaphor means indirect comparison between two things. That is, clouds are compared to veils. So indirectly it is compared. That is called as metaphor. Then finally, uh, before we give I uh, give the assignment, we have this summarization or summary of the poem. The poet is reminded of his past, his boyhood when he visited the peaceful lake island of Innisfree. He wants to go there and says that he will live there all alone. He wants to build a small cabin with clay and wattles. He would grow beans and get a honey bee hive for honey to survive on. The poet describes the peaceful natural surroundings of the lake. He says that the scene of the cloudy mornings, the, sun, the shining stars, the glowing sun and birds flying in the sky give him peace. He feels relaxed to hear the pleasant sound of a cricket's song. The poet feels the urgency to go to the lake Isle of Ennisfree. In the depth of his heart, he can hear the sound of the lake waters hitting the shore. It is as if the lake is calling him. He hears the sound everywhere, either on the crowded roads or the grey-colored pavements of the city in which he lives. This indicates that he wants to escape from the artificial life of the city into the peaceful surroundings of nature. And finally, we have the home assignment here. What kind of place is NS3? Think about it and write. Then another one is the three things the poet wants to do when he goes back there. Stanza 1. Stanza 2. I mean question number 2. 1, 2. What he hears and sees there and its effect on him. Stanza 3. I mean stanza 2 you'll find there. Then 3. What he hears in this in his heart's core even when he is far away from NS3. Stanza 3. The next assignment is look at the words the poet uses to describe what he sees and hears at NS3. The first one is be loud glade. Then evenings full of the linnet's wings, lake water lapping with low sounds. So in all those three questions, the above questions, what pictures do these words create in your mind? You'll have to write it. Then the fourth one is write the rhyme scheme of the poem. As I have mentioned earlier. Then the next one is, final one is find another example of alliteration devices from the poem. So that's it for this, uh, for this, I mean for today. All the best for the assignment.
Stay home, stay safe. Thank you.